Good evening and welcome to you all for this service of evening prayer on Tuesday the 9th of March. So to be slightly distracted there, I was just watching the cat climbing the tree, but then he decided that he wasn't going to go up on the high branches where he needs rescuing from, thank goodness. Um, so we can continue with evening prayer uninterrupted. <laughs> o oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Hear our voice, O oh Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgments, give us life. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. In the darkness of our sin, you have shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to acknowledge your presence, that freed from the misery of sin and shame, we may grow into your likeness from glory to glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, blessed be God for ever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 61. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Hear my crying, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you with fainting heart, or set me on the rock that is higher than I. For you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever, and take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O oh God, will hear my vows. You will grant the request of those who fear your name. You will add length of days to the life of the king, that his years may endure throughout all generations. May he sit enthroned before God for ever. May steadfast love and truth watch over him. So will I always sing praise to your name, and day by day fulfil my vows. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Risen Christ, as you knew the discipline of suffering and the victory that brings us salvation, so grant us your presence in our weakness and a place in your unending kingdom, now and for and, and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So we continue our readings from the book of Genesis this evening, chapter 47, verses 28, through to the end of chapter 48. Jacob lived in the land of Egypt for 17 years. So the days of Jacob, the years of his life, were 147 years. When the time of Israel's death drew near, he called his son Joseph and said to him, If I have found favour with you, put your hand under my thigh and promise to deal loyally and truly with me. Do not bury me in Egypt. When I lie down with my ancestors, carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. He answered, I will do as you have said. And he said, Swear to me, and he swore to him. Then Israel bowed himself on the head of his bed. After this, Joseph was told, Your father is ill. So he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. When Jacob was told, Your son Joseph has come to you, he summoned his strength and sat up in bed. And Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan, and he blessed me. And he said to me, I am going to make you fruitful and increase your numbers. I will make of you a company of peoples and will give this land to your offspring after you for a perpetual holding. Therefore, your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt are now mine. Ephraim and Manasseh shall be mine, just as Reuben and Simeon are. 
As for the offspring born to you after them, they shall be yours. They shall be recorded unto the names of their brothers with regard to their inheritance. For when I came from Paddan, Rachel, alas, died in the land of Canaan on the way, while there was still some distance to go to Ephrath. And I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. When Israel saw Joseph's sons, he said, Who are these? Joseph said to his father, These are my sons whom God has given me here. And he said, Bring them to me, please, that I may bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim with age, and he could not see well. So Joseph brought them near him, and he kissed them and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I did not expect to see your face, and here God has let me see your children also. Then Joseph removed them from his father's knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. Joseph took them both, Ephraim at his right hand towards Israel's left, and Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right, and brought them near him. But Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on the head of Ephraim, who was the younger, and his left hand on the head of Manasseh, crossing his hands, for Manasseh was the firstborn. He blessed Joseph and said, The God before whom my ancestors, Abraham and Isaac, walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all harm, bless the boys, and in them let my name be perpetuated, and the name of my ancestors Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude on the earth. When Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, so he took his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to his father, not so, my father, since this one is the firstborn, put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. Nevertheless, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his offspring shall become a multitude of nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you Israel will invoke blessings, saying, God make you like Ephraim and like Manasseh. So he put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, I am about to die, but God will be with you and will bring you again to the land of your ancestors. I now give to you one portion more than to your brothers, the portion that I took from the hand of the Amorites with my sword and with my bow. Here ends our first reading. Song of Christ the Servant Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example, that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten but he trusted himself to God who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found upon his lips. Our second reading is taken from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 11, through to chapter 6, verse 12. About this we have much to say that is hard to explain, since you have become dull in understanding. For though by this time you ought to be the teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic elements of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is unskilled in the word of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose faculties have been trained by practice to distinguish good from evil. 
Therefore, let us go on towards perfection, leaving behind the basic teaching about Christ, and not laying again the foundation, repentance from dead works and faith towards God, instruction about baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And we will do this if God permits. For it is impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come. And they have fallen away since on their own they are crucifying again the Son of God and are holding him up to contempt. Ground that drinks up the rain falling on it repeatedly and that produces a crop useful to, the, to those for whom it is cultivated, receives a blessing from God. But if it produces thorns and thistles, it is worthless and on the verge of being cursed. Its end is to be burned away. Even though we speak in this way, beloved, we are confident of better things, in your case, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust. He will not overlook your work and the love that you showed for his sake in serving the saints as you still do. And we want each other of you to show the same diligence so as to realise the full assurance of hope to the very end so that you may not become sluggish but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Here ends our second reading. The Magnificat. Come, let us return to the Lord, for our God will richly pardon. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Come, let us return to the Lord, to our God, who will richly pardon. So let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for this day, for all that it has brought us, for the people we may have met with, the conversations that we've held, the people who have asked us to pray for them, and for rest and relaxation that we may have been able to enjoy. We thank you that we are able to meet together this evening to hear the words of Scripture and to make our prayers together. For our parish prayer intention, we pray for those who provide all we need. Help us, Lord, never to take for granted those things that we have around us, the things that make our lives comfortable, the things that take away the worry. We thank you for the food we have to eat, clean water that we have to drink, shelter over our heads, family and friends, even if we miss seeing them. We know that they still love and care for us. We thank you for the access that we have to education and to medicine. For those things that we can so easily take for granted. We pray for those across the world who long to have even a fraction of what we have. And we pray especially for those who try to alleviate the suffering of your children, Lord. Remembering that we are all created equally in your sight. We pray for aid agencies. 
for charity workers and for all those who work for the good of your people. And so we pray for the leaders of nations, for our own government and for all who are making decisions on our behalf at this time, that they truly would make them with that wisdom and clarity, with discernment and with hope. We pray for our part in keeping to restrictions that are placed upon our lives at this time, however frustrating we may find them. We know that we keep them out of care and respect for one another. So we pray for our church. So we pray for the leaders of the church, the Archbishops of Canterbury and York, for the bishops in our own diocese, for Julian, Philip and Jill, for our archdeacons, Mark and David, and for the work that they do in guiding and inspiring us. We pray for our churches across the diocese and across our country, for those who are preparing to reopen in the coming weeks, for the gathering of people once again for worship. And we thank you, Lord, that we are able to balance now, in person and online, so all may feel connected in some way. We pray for our schools as they have begun to reopen this week. We pray for our young people, their mixture of anxiety, nerves and excitement at being back at school. We pray for those who teach, for those who lead, for those who support and those who have the responsibility of keeping our young people safe whilst in education. We pray for our key workers, for those who go out to work and those who work from home. And we thank you for all that they provide for us as well, in keeping our day-to-day -day lives running smoothly. Those jobs that are at the forefront and those jobs which happen behind the scenes. We pray for those businesses, for those places that will be reopening in the coming weeks, for employers in their responsibility of keeping their workers safe. We pray for those who continue to be furloughed, for those who are unable to find work, and for those who've been made unemployed during the past few months. Lord, we ask that you would be with them and with those who try to help them and provide for their needs. And so we continue at this time to pray for all those who work in the medical profession. We give thanks for them, that they have heard the call upon their lives, who have trained for so many years to be able to care for those who are sick. We pray for those who work in our hospitals, for those in intensive care, for those working on the wards, those who work behind the scenes, and for our hospital chaplains, for the pastoral care and support that they provide for patients and staff alike. We pray for those who find themselves in hospital at this time. We continue also to pray for the work of our local hospices and the care that they provide for those who are coming to the end of their life. We pray for care homes, sheltered accommodation, nursing and residential homes, and especially for those places that have witnessed the joy of family members being able to meet once again. We pray for those who go out into the community to work, for carers, health visitors, district nurses, those who provide meals and the many other ways in which people are cared for in their own home. We pray for our GP surgeries, pharmacies and health centres and especially for all places that have been vaccination hubs today, for those who have administered vaccines and those who have received them. So we bring to you, Lord, those who have asked us to pray for them, for those we know who suffer in body, mind or spirit, and for those, Lord, whose needs are known to you alone, that you would touch their lives with healing and wholeness this evening. Amongst the many that we pray for, 
Rename Lisa, David, Margaret, Jeff, Alan, Chris, John, Jim, Elaine, Susan, Kath and her family, Christine, Sister Catherine, Marion, Douglas, Steve, Brian, Joanna, Ian, Jean, Jane, Eric, Jennifer, Deirdre, Carol, Barbara and Pauline. Lord, we ask for that healing for them all this evening. And so we pray for those who have died, for those who've died this past day, for those who've died recently, and those whose anniversaries of death occur at this time. Lord, we ask that you would bind up the broken-hearted, that you would comfort those who mourn, and wipe away the tears of those who grieve. Help them to see the hope of the resurrection and the gift of eternal life, won for us all by your Son, Jesus Christ. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me for this service of evening prayer this evening. It's been lovely to have your company as always. Tomorrow we have our usual services of 9 o'clock morning prayer and 5 o'clock evening prayer. If you're able to join me for either or both of those services. In the meantime, I hope that you have a good evening. You stay safe, take care, look after yourselves and you remain as always in my prayers. Do take care.